Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Medford Praetorian Slim. Very, very cool. There are a lot of features on this knife that I think, if you guys, a lot of you who are really familiar with Medford knives, uh, there are a lot of features on this knife that I think will shock you. I'm really excited to talk about them. First off, this knife was sent to me by at Amateur Knives. Please give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. That's on Instagram, by the way. It is also absolutely because of my wonderful and generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some of these cool stickers, there is, of course, a link down in the description. Uh, as is the case with links for this knife, I'll uh, provide links where you can check out this knife in all of its different forms. It has many different forms, so if nothing more for than if nothing more than just curiosity, feel free to check out the link. Um, okay, so this is a Praetorian that is slim. <laughs> That's essentially what's going on here, and it's not just in terms of thickness of materials; it's in terms of the overall profile as well. Uh, there are and the most common complaint that I hear about Medford knives is they're too thick. They can't cut. Well, even the thickest ones cut. If you don't believe me, go back and check out the What's So Great About Medford Knives video that I did. Uh, they cut. It's just how efficiently they cut. And uh, what Medford has done here is um, he has uh, provided, a, Greg Medford that is, has provided a model that uh, caters to people who look for, I mean, truthfully, it's not like it's an unreasonable request, uh, a knife that... Um, you can carry and use efficiently that, um, you know, fits in the pocket and um, does what it's supposed to do. Not to say that his other knives don't, but yeah, that's what this is. Um, it is definitely an expensive knife. This is a partially handmade knife. I would call it a mid-tech. I believe Greg calls it a custom tech. You can go to the, go do the Medford University thing on the website to find out exactly what is involved with his knives. He's very open about it and it is very extensive. So I uh, invite you guys to go do that. Uh, before we get into all the fine details here, let's get a measurement on this guy. Overall length of the Medford Slim Praetorian coming in at a surprising seven and three quarter inches overall. Uh, the blade length is coming in at about 3.3 and then the cutting edge is coming in at exactly three and a quarter. So this is going to be a very preferable size for a lot of people. Absolutely. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. The Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see this is not a small knife, but it is shorter than the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. I'm, I'm moving around to see how the light behind me is affecting the <laughs> table. Sorry. Uh, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. Uh, I think this is a good size. It's The Ritter Hogue is always a fantastic size comparison because so many people are uh, familiar with the Benchmade Griptilian and so many knives are compared to it, right? Um, so there you go. You'll notice there's a lot of handle room and very similar blade length and cutting edge between those two. Uh, last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. The Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. So how's the action on this guy? This is one of a few Medford models currently that runs on bearings, and it is very, very smooth. There are a couple of areas in there that I can feel where I actually, somebody asked me about this the other day. They said, my action feels a little bit bumpy. What's that all about? Well, this particular model is, a, I believe, a DLC coated blade. Now, depending on the surface finish of your knife, whether it's you know, satin, tumbled, DLC coated, and I'm sure there is an area that's polished on the inside of there a little bit more to accept those bearings. Sometimes you'll feel that a little bit and it's not necessarily an issue. Sometimes that slight bumpiness is a feeling of debris that's just in there and the bearings are running over it, like literally just a human hair that's in there. You'll feel a bump, right? Um, and sometimes it's areas in the race, which is the line that the ceramic bearings are running into the, uh, sometimes they're steel bearings, but it, it's, it's the line that the steels, or I'm, the, I'm sorry, the bearings are running into the face of the blade. Sometimes there are uneven areas in the face of the blade, and it just takes a little bit to work them out. There is nothing uh, in terms of the action that uh, makes me feel like, gosh, this is not a quality action. No, in fact, quite the opposite. This is very smooth. It is extremely smooth and nearly falls shut. Other than that one little bump, which I'm sure is not going to be the case with every single one of these, it really is 
a, a pretty amazing action. You know, it's not, the reason I'm emphasizing it is because up to this point, aside from a couple, I think, is it just the Smooth Criminal? I mean, maybe there's one more. Up to this point, Medford Knives have run exclusively on Phosphor Bronze, and they've always done a great job with Phosphor Bronze, right? Um, so it's kind of interesting to see a Medford on bearings. But, um, you know, for one of the first models that he's done on bearings, yeah, I think it's really great. And on top of that, you guys saw me do this initially. You can totally do the reverse flick. No problem. That little fuller there, very easy to engage. And check this out. So this little thing up here is a glass breaker, and it works as a glass breaker, but uh, somebody on um, uh, Instagram, and it was um, uh, J, uh, oh my gosh, J, I am so sorry. Um, I'll try to remember, um, or I'm, I'll try to include your uh, Instagram down in the comments section, um, but he said, hey, is, is that Praetorian Slim a front flipper? And I looked at it, and I thought, uh... I don't think so. And I was like, wait, there's a little jimping thing up there. So if you get it just right, yeah, it actually can be front flipped. I'm not, I'm not going to say that that was the intended purpose there. That little tab is definitely more of a glass breaker, right? Now, how effective it is in this position versus, the, I don't know. I don't really care about that. It's a glass breaker. I'm not generally going to use that. For people that are going to use that, I'm sure it'll work just fine. But it does have an maybe unintended secondary feature. I honestly don't know if that was their intention there, but yeah, you can front flip this thing. It is not the most comfortable front flipper in the world. And I think that that was because now, now if you want to slow open it as a front flipper, oh yeah, no problem. Quick opening it. You really have to put more pressure in towards the pivot first and then just gradually slide over the top. But it does work if you want to do that, adding a level of fidget factor to this knife that uh, I didn't think that it had. So that's kind of neat. <laughs> It's not that a slim knife that has an, a good carry profile, which we're going to talk about, that runs on bearings and is a front flipper, or kind of, is not something that I would have... I mean, if you had told me that two years ago, I would have been like, no, it's not a Medford, right? But yeah, um, that's kind of neat. So uh, yeah, just for your information, you totally can front flip it. Let's go ahead and... Um, well, normally I would do... I'll tell you what, we'll do a partial... Hardware check because I believe no, those are hex. So we have uh, on the hardware check. I can't do it because this is does have well. A lot of people say that's not proprietary. You can get a tool for that or make a tool for that. Uh, it's not a common tool, right? And everybody knows about the whole. You know, if you disassemble your knife, avoids the warranty. And also now it's pretty common knowledge that that is not like it, it's not something that's like absolutely we won't even talk to you about it. No, actually, you know, as most people have found out. They will talk with you about it. You know, it depends on what happened with the knife. If you tried to mod something, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, that information is out there. Seek it out. It's pretty common. Um, but uh, I still would have preferred a Torx uh, head in there just so I could get at it easily. These back here, you can adjust at least with a simple hex head. So that's uh, no big deal there. Appreciate that. Um, let's go ahead and do thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Boy, look at that. It really is slim, guys. <laughs> no problem there. Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3 and PM2, two knives that have unquestionably awkward carry profiles that nobody ever seems to complain about. Guys, this is a winner. Holy cow. Um, handle length is very similar to the Spyderco Para 3. I'm sure this is really shocking some people right now. Handle length is very similar. Uh, or overall length closed is very similar to the Spyderco Para 3 and is definitely shorter than the PM2. It's also nowhere near as tall as either of them. This has an awesome carry profile and there's nothing awkward sticking out either. It's, that's nice. It's got a really, really nice carry profile. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys the internals here. Uh, the scales are solid titanium, but they're not very thick. Um, and neither is the blade. Let's go ahead and measure the blade. It's got to be record thinness. I think this is probably about the same thickness as the slim midi. Yep. Uh, 1.18, so it's under 120 thousandths. It's probably meant to be right at 120 thousandths. Well, now I'm getting 124. I probably need to make sure that I'm measuring it in the right place. Yeah, okay, we're good. Uh, okay, yeah, it's about 120 thousandths. That is uh, an unheard of uh, blade thickness for a Medford knife, right? I mean, it used to be that thin for a Medford was 165 thousandths. 
and then you had his 187 series, and then you had the, uh, you know, 260 thousandths uh, Praetorian tie and some of those other ones, right? Um, here's the really, really cool thing. It's the overall weight of this guy. <sighs> 3.74 ounces. That is just great. I have no problem with that. Yeah, it's over the ounce and inch thing, but I mean, whatever. The carry profile on this thing is ridiculously good. This knife is stupid easy to carry, right? If you wear athletic shorts every day or you're used to carrying the bug out pair of three lightweights, like I always say, it might not be your cup of tea, but the thinness of this thing will honestly be welcome in just about anything but athletic shorts. If you wear athletic shorts every single day, I'm not judging you, but I, you know, it's kind of, you're pretty limited, right? Um, for 99.9% .9 of people, this is simply going to be an easy object to carry. It's like I always say, if you can't carry a knife with a blade length like this in your area, you know, eh, sorry, um, you know, that obviously that stinks, knife laws stink, um, uh, that, uh, you know, keep people from carrying um, knives that have a trivial additional blade length, right? But it is what it is. For everybody else, it's certainly going to be um, easy to carry. Absolutely. All right. Did we cover all of that stuff? I think that we did. Let's go ahead and take a look at the um, anatomy here. So we have, in this case, we have a tumbled bronze uh, uh, scale here, or both scales are tumbled bronze. Then we have this, it looks like they're almost like polished black PVD hardware or something like that. Really, really nice. The PVD on the blade, honestly, if that is the PVD, which I believe that it is, and you will pay extra for the PVD. It does remind me a bit of the stonewashed um, DLC finish on Hinderer Knives. And it's because of that slightly reflective bronzy hue, right? It is somewhat similar. It's just a little bit less reflective, and that's fine. Uh, the PVD coatings that Medford uses are extremely durable. I don't understand the exact science behind it, but they essentially turn that coating into vapor and then they apply it to the surface of the blade in a vacuum chamber so that it bonds like basically perfectly right um, it is very uh difficult to take a real scratch uh the pvd will resist actual scratches really really well um anything any marks you get on the blade are likely just the pulverized material of whatever it is that you were cutting up against the blade and can be cleaned off so that's great um the uh blade steel on this guy as you can see here, that S means S35VN. Um, I say this every time that I talk about a Medford knife. Anybody who's up in arms about the D2 on Medford knives, you can stop. It's CPM D2. I have confirmed that with them. CPM D2 is very different from regular ingot form D2. It takes advantage of these. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because some Medford knives are in D2. Not I don't think this one comes in D2. But every time I do a Medford video, somebody brings that up. Medford uses CPM D2. It benefits greatly from the powder process because of even carbide distribution and carbide formation. CPM D2 is a wildly different monster. That has nothing to do with this though, because these come, I believe, currently just in S35VN. It won't surprise me if down the road they do something in 3V or if they do a DLT exclusive in S90V, uh, which they have definitely done in the past. In fact, S90V would actually not be a bad steal for this knife. There are some other Medford knives that are exclusive through DLT that are in S90V, and I'm like, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But on this knife, I think it would be fine. In this geometry, in this thinness, I think just about any steel would work just fine for continuous cutting. So that's great. Um, we have the Medford crest here. And then on the other side, it has the serial number, which I don't mind at all. Um, I think actually in this case, um, it kind of goes along with the sort of battle tool or military tool-esque look. I mean, Medford knives kind of have that essence about them. So I think that's just fine. The fuller is great. Uh, everything's nicely knocked down. It's not too sharp, right? I mean, as you're cutting things, stuff might get trapped in there. Would just wipe it out. All these edges are nicely knocked down. You can see there, there's nice chamfering all the way down. We have a sort of Tanto blade going on here. Um, I don't know if they'll, as far as I've seen, they only offer these in this sort of compound Tanto grind, um, which is uh, similar. It's just, you know, a, a shortened up uh, version of the Praetorian uh tanto blade right um i don't know if they'll provide a if they'll do a drop point version of this i think that would be really cool because most of their other knives you know have or the praetorian series knives have both drop point and tanto available either way that's fine with me you have a flat that carries out a lot of thickness uh, well of the 120 thousandths all the way out to about 85 maybe 90 percent the length of the blade so for how thin the blade stock is, it really does maintain a lot of uh, thickness and therefore potential durability out to the tip, so that's fine. This area here is hollow ground, and this area out here is flat, and you do get you do get very, 
very thin behind that edge, very impressive. All Medford knives are sharpened very well and have a glassy smooth edge. You can see there it's a partially mirror polished final cutting edge. This thing cuts. Unquestionably, it cuts. It doesn't matter that the flat's running down through the middle or that there's a fuller there. It has no problem gliding through material. This is an excellent blade for EDC. And you have that flat ground blade out at the tip. So what would otherwise be possibly a little bit of a delicate tip is reinforced by that flat ground blade, which makes this an excellent tool for EDC. It is a very versatile blade that's going to tackle most of what you're going to throw at it, right? And the way that it's built is still in, you know, what I would consider to be not ultra, ultra hard use, but it's still extremely capable. This thing does use external stops that are garage, which means they are bracing on the frame, which uh, something I always point out mitigates pressure away from the pivot. If you are doing a little bit of wiggle cutting or, pro you know, when you cut deep into something and the blade gets wedged and you kind of have to wiggle it back out, it's nice to have a little bit of excess reinforcement. So that's why I always like those external stops. I don't know if you call them external or internal. It's nice. It's really uh, satisfying actually to see that glass breaker tip and the stops just nicely fit right into the frame. That's really, really cool. All these edges down here, nicely knocked down, very comfortable. Uh, ergonomically, yeah, it's it's nice. The pocket clip I can feel a little bit because it's got a bill, right? But if you're gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say this is a knife that requires gloves. It's one of few Medford knives that I've ever handled where I, you know, I'm gonna say, actually this knife probably was designed more for EDC and less for hard work with gloves, right? Um, there is nothing here that I would call a hotspot except for the pocket clip. Bearing down on this knife and using it for continuous cutting, which it's definitely built for, is eventually going to wear in on your palm just a little bit because of the pocket clip. But everything else is great. These little sort of finger grooves, they, they actually do <laughs> meet up with your fingers and they uh, provide a little bit of traction on an otherwise very smooth surface. They have a little lanyard area back here that is no, nowhere near prioritized over the pocket clip, so that's fine. I don't mind the position at all. Just two uh, screws, and it's got a mainly uh, open body construction, which means it'll be very, very uh, easy to simply run a cloth through there and clean it out. The pocket clip actually looks really nice. Um, there's nothing crazy going on. Sometimes, you know, Medford has really crazy pocket clips, and then they have like that boring popsicle stick clip, um, which kind of go with some designs and kind of don't go with others. This is just a normal pocket clip. It doesn't carry ultra deep, but it doesn't carry shallow. It's honestly, it's just fine. And it's resting on um, both. See, the relief cut is on the inside. So it's not re resting on the relief cut. It is resting on partially on the frame, partially on the, uh, the, the lock bar. So it doesn't have an over travel stop, but that pocket clip is nice and tight. So it does provide a nice amount of uh, retention. It's easy to get in and out of the pocket because the smooth because of the smooth surface of the uh, titanium frame. And it provides a little bit of excess pressure in the event that you accidentally push a little too hard and try to push that, um, that lock bar all the way over. That pocket clip is gonna, for the most part, stop you from doing that. So I would have liked to see some type of over travel stop, like, you know, like either the, the, the lock bar insert or the, the disc, right? It's not that big of a deal that it's not on there. The pocket clip is doing an okay job of that. That is just something that I would have been like, hey, cool, you know, doesn't have a lock bar insert. It doesn't matter. I've talked about this a million times. The lock bar inserts are nice, you know, for maintenance if the lock bar wears all the way over, but lock bar inserts tend to be a little bit more slippery than a titanium surface that's been carbonized. And Medford talks about this, right? The carbonized titanium uh, lock face will actually work hardened and it'll lock up more securely excuse me, over time. It doesn't depend so much on perfect geometry as it does just the natural reaction of itself versus, you know, it, it, with the uh, tang of the blade. Um, so it is going to continue to lock up securely. And the geometry on Medford knives is always really, really good. This thing is 100% solid. I have never felt a Medford knife with blade play. And if there are out there, you know, ones out there with blade play, you likely can just use your thumb because it means maybe the pivot just backed out just a little bit, which I also have never experienced. And I've handled a lot of Medford knives, a lot of knives in general, but a lot of Medford knives. I've never felt that. If you have your pit, your pivot tightened down or you're, con you're convinced that it is, and you're feeling a little bit of blade play or uh, yeah, blade play, contact Medford knives. It's not common, right? Nobody's perfect though. No company is perfect. So it might happen every now and then, but I personally have never <laughs> felt blade play in a Medford knife. The consistency between all of the Medford knives that I have ever handled is fantastic, right? Whether or not some of their knives are more or less appropriate for certain tasks, eh, sometimes that's eye of the beholder and sometimes it depends on how you look at the object, right? But in terms of quality, the quality of the build, 
yeah, Medford makes great knives, and this is absolutely right in the same line, right? Really, really cool. The blade is absolutely centered, which is the case with every Medford knife that I've ever handled, and uh, I'm just really happy with this. So, again, minor critiques. The pocket clip is a little bit of a hot spot. Oh, well. Uh, proprietary hardware sucks, but, I mean, it, it's really... It, as far as all the little things that really bother me about knives, I'm just not the type of person to get all bent out of shape about proprietary hardware. There are lots of other companies out there who use that proprietary or, or different types of proprietary hardware. And you, you know, you got some people complaining and, and most people don't, right? So it is what it is. I would have liked to see some type of over travel stop, but the pocket clip does a decent job of, uh, you know, keeping that uh, lock bar from, from, you know, bending all the way out. The blade is excellent. The carry profile, the blade profile, um, and the final cutting edge, the thinness behind the edge are just wonderful. And the fact that this knife has, you know, you can do the reverse flick so easily and you can do the thumb flick, right? You can also easily just open the knife, right? And then if you really want to and you practice at it, yeah, you can totally front flip this thing. Great. The biggest downside to this knife is the price. That's going to be the case with most people. These come in or they start, I believe, at about $525. What? Because it's a it's a semi-custom, right? It's a mid-tech. It's a custom tech. It means partially handmade. These are made in the United States, in-house. They are hand-checked, hand-tuned, hand-assembled. The blades are, for the most part, I believe, hand-ground and hand-sharpened. That costs more money. If you want to reduce the value of this knife, just the materials used, okay. But... Then, you know, then go buy yourself a nice $200 knife that's S35VN in titanium and has no extra work in it. There's no, I'm not going to say that's right or wrong. The fact of the matter is, is that this knife and other knives built the same way, they cost more money, period. That's just what this is. Do I think, do I think that this knife is worth it for the build quality? Considering that I know what goes into a Medford knife, that I've experienced many, um, yeah, um, totally. Uh, you know, the, the Hinderer knives with a G10 front scale come in at $425 and to my knowledge don't have nearly the same level of human attention to them as, as Medford knives do. So they cost a little bit less to make. You want to add full titanium to a hinder, you're going to pay over $600 for it. So this thing coming in at $525, despite the fact that it does not have an insert and does not have a lock bar stabilizer, which are not totally necessary items, it just doesn't bother me. S35VN is great. It is totally appropriate for this, uh, for this knife. And I'm just really impressed with the overall build and the execution of this thing. And guys, primarily, this is a Medford knife. Like if you just want, you're like, I like how Medford knives look. I just don't like the idea of carrying this big hulking object. Here you go. Here's their answer. They got the size right. They got the blade to handle ratio right. They got the weight right. I mean, thinness behind the edge. This thing cuts. I cannot emphasize it enough. This is so cool. And it allows people... Um, and you know, that, uh, kind of fall into the, you know, the modern, uh, like right now, this, this year, um, and, and in just uh, recent years, you know, people have really had this, uh, this emphasis on, on wanting thinness behind the edge and carry profile, understandably, right? We want to be able to comfortably carry these tools and use them. And at the same time, enjoy them for the objects that they are, which are, you know, very precision made in some cases, partially handmade tools that that uh, ha that are just special because that's what goes into them can i recommend this knife yeah yeah definitely not i mean not everybody is gonna i'm not gonna say that you have to spend this much money to get a quality knife right but uh this is a wonderful wonderful tool and it's it's i love how it looks it's excellent it's a very handsome knife so if you have been you know, experiencing the knife world in the 250, 300, 350 dollar price range, and you're like, I kind of would like to experience, you know, the ultra high end of production or the mid tech area of of, of uh, knives. And I've always thought Medford knives looks interesting. Um, I just really want something that cuts. Yeah, then definitely, this is an excellent tool. You know, if you have the money and you can understand where the money or where the value is in a knife like this. And you're wondering, is $525 well spent on a knife like this? In my opinion, yes, it is. Absolutely. That's very, very cool. I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's review, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody.
and have a great day.